I'm Stan. And I'm Amanda. And we're SC Finance Strategies and Insurance Consultants and experts on the infinite banking, tax-free cash growth warehouse strategy. One of the most profitable enterprises is the banking business. And one of the banking business's most profitable practices is their use of the interest rate arbitrage strategy. So we're going to talk about learning a lesson or taking a page from the banking industry. Arbitrage happens when you buy something and sell it simultaneously for a profit. For example, in real estate investing, a practice called wholesaling is taught as a means to profit without spending or tying up any of your own money. Basically, what you do is find a property for sale, find a buyer for the property, then contract to buy the property at a price, and then sell it to the buyer you already have waiting at a profit. You never actually put any money down or, and, or tie any money up, but because you, the contract you made with the seller, you had control of it, and then you sold it for a profit and simply collected your spoils from the transaction. Of course, there's more to it than that, but there's the basic idea. Banks do the same thing with people's money. Did you know that when you put money into a bank savings account, you are actually lending the bank your money? That's why, the, they, that's why they pay interest to their savings accounts. The interest they pay is minimal, but it makes their use of your money legal. Think about what they're actually doing. Let's say you put $1,000 in a bank savings account. They agree to pay you a half a percent interest. And I'm being generous here. Then they take your $1,000 and loan it to somebody else and charge them 10% interest. Or maybe they loan it out on amortized interest. In that case, it's probably a lower APR, such as 4%. But it's being amortized. And for a small loan like that of $1,000, it's probably for a shorter term, like maybe four years. And in that case, the interest is amortized over the four years, and the bank will collect $160 in interest, or 16%. How much profit did the bank make on your $1,000? They paid you a half a percent, even multiply that for the four years they loaned it out for, and they paid you a total of $20. They collected $160 when they loaned it out to someone else. So they made an 800% profit. It actually works out to a way more than that because banks practice fractional reserve banking, which allows them to loan out 10 times the amount they actually have. So that $1,000 you loan the bank, that is, deposited into a savings account at the bank, that $1,000 became a $10,000 loan to someone else. Hey, <laughs> it's just ones and zeros on a computer, right? Well, we aren't gonna go into all of that here, but we can learn a valuable and profitable strategy lesson from this and one that you can practice when you have the right tools and products. Again, we're talking about interest rate arbitrage. So let's take it to the tax-free cash growth warehouse. Again, we'll use just a thousand dollars to keep it simple. And let's pretend we can do something in a real estate investment with a thousand dollars. Well, actually, you probably can do something in real estate with $1,000, even in Hawaii, if you put together a hui and invest as a group. But that's a whole other strategy. Okay, you have $1,000 in your tax-free cash growth warehouse, TFCGW for short. You know a person who wants to buy a property, fix it up, and flip it for a profit. Let's say they already bought the property and now they need money to buy the materials to renovate it. So you loan them your $1,000 for their project at 10% interest, straight interest. So that means that if they pay you back any time within 12 months, they will pay you $100 in interest for the use of your money. If it takes them more than a year to make their profit and pay you back, then you get another 10% prorated per month. Now let's say they pay you back 
in the 12 months. And you then repay the leverage loan you took in order to lend the money to your investor. When you leverage your $1,000, you agreed to pay 5% simple interest on that loan. The bare bones of this deal goes like this. You pay your loan back plus 5%, which is $50. You collected $100 in interest from your investor that you loaned it to. Your profit is $50. Not too shabby, but it's way better than that because all the time you were accruing the 5% interest on your leverage loan, your $1,000 was actually still in your TFCGW, collecting 6% dividend interest. So you actually profited another $10, bringing your total profit up to $60 on your transaction with the investor. But wait, there's more. You actually use the leverage loan for a business purpose, and that entitles you to deduct the 5% interest you were charged from your income tax. That means while you had to pay income tax on the $50 profit from the interest rate arbitrage deal you did, you get to deduct the $50 from your income tax that you paid in interest on your loan. Income tax on $50 gain from the deal is about $12.50. Your total gross profit from the deal was $60. Minus the $12.50 gives you $47.50 net profit. Plus, the $50 tax deduction brings your total advantage to $97.50. That's 97.5% profit to you based on the cost of your deal. On something like this, you have collateral for the loan that you make to your investor, the property that they're investing in. So you really have no risk of loss and your gain is better than and quicker than pretty much anything else you could do with the money. While it's not 800% like the banks get, it's a whole lot better than just letting your money make money for the bank. While you lose money to infl inf inflation, collecting the measly half percent the bank pays you. What we just described is called hard money lending in the real estate world. We have clients who practice this strategy with their TFCGW accounts on a regular basis. One of them is an investor and developer. He buys a parcel of land, then builds a house on it and sells it. He uses his TFCGW and loans the money for his projects to himself. He also does hard money lending to other investors. Another client buys a property, fixes it up, and flips it. She uses her TFCGW to fund her projects. This is a real solid strategy and it's very profitable. Whether you do the investing yourself or lend money to others to invest, you still get to deduct the interest you pay for your leverage loans from your income tax. This strategy and several others are laid out in our book, Tax-Free Cash Growth Warehouse Nuts and Bolts, available on Amazon.com. Please post your questions and comments here and subscribe to this channel. Aloha and mahalo for watching.